Welcome to the 58th episode of the MC Knitting Adventures podcast. My name's Colleen. And my name is May. Welcome returning viewers. And for those of you watching us for the first time, we're glad you could join us. We're excited about our um, podcast today. We haven't been on for a little while, but we're glad to be back and be talking to you again. And um, if you stay tuned for the um, souvenir part, I have bought Colleen a birthday gift that you might be interested in seeing oh. for her 60th birthday. Oh I don't know if I goodness. should have said that out loud. But she I said it out loud. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but before we begin, Colleen will talk about what we're wearing. So first of all, let's talk about what May is wearing. And that is the Dainty Dots Cowl. And that's by Molly Klein Designs. And it is knit out of String Theory Hand Dyed Yarn Caper Sock. Very soft, Colleen. Beautiful. Nice job. It looks really good. Now, the nice thing is I bought two skeins. This didn't even take up a full skein. So I had a skein and a bit to make a shawl. And so it is beautiful yarn. It's got a little bit of cashmere in it. Oh, that's why it's so soft. That's why it's so soft. Yes, nice. and it looks great. The color suits you very nicely. So that's what May is wearing. And as far as what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the Birds and Ships Cowl by Caitlin Hunter. And I had leftover yarn um, from a sleeveless sweater that I made. It's Emma's yarn, crazy beautiful color, super silky. Now, on the pattern, it has a uh, tassel right there. And I didn't put it on, but I, having worn this for the first time today, I understand why it's there. Because it will pull this down and show off the lace a little bit more. So you may see this again and it will have the little tassel to show you on the picture. It's so funny that you talk about the tassel because it is a dilemma for you odd and off. Like, exactly. do I put a tassel on? Do I not put a tassel on? Right. Obviously you found out. Hey. Exactly. And so I have enough yarn left. So I'm going to make a tassel and then I can put it on. And I don't have to tie it on. I can tie it on and be able to take it off well, if I don't like it. So we'll give it a trial first. Looks good. Okay. So that's what we're wearing. And next we're going to talk about finished objects. My first finished object is the Snow Day Shawl by Mina Phillip. And it is made out of uh, vint Barocco Vintage DK. This is one of my favorites. I think you've done this earlier on in the podcast. Yes. And it was totally one of my favorites. It still is. Yes. Now you'll see that there's little strands. And the reason for that is I haven't blocked it yet. And I just want to talk a little bit about blocking because depending on the shawl will depend on how much blocking needs to happen. This doesn't have a whole lot of lace, so it doesn't need to be blocked. There might be one side that I think will block. So what I'm going to ask May to do is do some photography of the things that I've blocked. So this one definitely needs to block. Um, there's always a thing about, do you weave in ends? Do you not weave in ends? So what I do is sort of weave in ends, then I block it. Um, and so that way I can just clip them when I'm done. So that's the first one. That's very nice. Love the color. Of Thank course you. it's purple. Of course, it's how it And works. this is the other one that you did in green before, which looked great yes. too. Yeah, and it's really comfy cozy that I want. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try and make a cowl out of that um, stitch this. pattern. It is I really, favorite. really like it. I don't know why, it's just, it's just it's the textures or the, I really like this, this part here. Yes, I really, really like now, it. That's not, that's two different yarns, right? You have yes, to, it that, is two is different Is that complicated yarns. to do this? Thing? No, no, no okay. not at all. It's a okay. great shawl to make if you're a beginner knitter. Perfect. Yeah, it's a good one. Nice. So that's the first one. Now, my second, she isn't folding that up so nicely. I am <laughs> so Because I'm more nervous. I'm on, I'm on camera, you know. She's doing really well. <laughs> All right, so my second finished object is the Kiowa Shawl by Tabitha Hedrick. I think I'm saying that right. She did that for Sweet Georgia. Now, it is a great pattern. Lots of garter stitch. Once again, you'll see that I haven't blocked it, but I wanted to show you the before and the after. So this has all kinds of things going on. There's increases, there's decreases. And the way that it's knit, you knit a certain point, you weigh what you've got of your yarn left and so I'm just going to pull it this okay. way from you and you can see that there's this little jog here and it's supposed to be there but it's one of those things that will block out okay 
there's an expression about blocking that right out of a, something <laughs> and this one will work. So all I'm going to do is block that on a straight line and it will help. And this is going to wrap around a bunch of times and I really, really like this. It I looks very nice, but it doesn't look like it would be a beginner uh, knit because there's so many things going on here. Like it's going this way and that there's, way. Yeah, that would maybe be an advanced beginner. That's yes. what I could say. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and this is knit out of Midnight Cravings. Sweet Sock. Wow. Yes, and it's beautiful yarn. We bought that at the Wool and Silk Company in Shelburne, Ontario. So I'm really happy with that. Once again, we're going to do the befores and afters of blocking that. Um, it's going to need to have more blocking than the first one. And then I'm just going to show you this one, which is the Winter Light Shawl. So we could have a day of blocking, I think, with this. We because could. Because blocking is time consuming, I think. Um, it is. And the thing is, I only have so many blocking mats and so many blocking wires. Now, this one has some more lace to this it. This is beautiful. There's lots of good textures. So if you want to open lace up, then you need to block it a little bit more aggressively. So I haven't blocked this. I could easily wear this without blocking it, but I just am going to try and open that lace work up a little bit more, and then it All will right. be nice. Well, that'll be interesting. You could do a whole video on blocking then, I think. Right, right. And there's one more block. thing in our um, episode um, today that I want to show you something about that I'm going to have to okay. block as well. All right, so my next finished object, and I'm going to let you hold okay. that up. So I'm going to get the beads to the front. There we go. And that is whoops, a Casio collar, and that's by Laura Nelkin. Now I don't have a ball band, but it is Jagger Spun Zephyr, and it is a lace weight yarn. And um, oh. so this I bought as a kit. I'm just going to do that. Maybe you'll oh, see that. very good. So I bought it as a kit and partly because I just wanted to learn. I wanted to get a sight of the beads. The nice thing is once you have a kit, then you can source beads. Can you hang things on this? Yes, you could. I'm not going to do it because I don't tend to clip my glasses down. But let's say you have a pair of glasses or sunglasses you could easily do that on here you have to be careful about it kind of pulling it um, but with these uh, silver beads right there it's going to help it nice very yep. nice so I really really like that yeah they come out nice mm -hmm. a lot of work no they no. go very quickly because it's very small and it doesn't take too long to do, do. you use a mic uh, like a um, magnifying glass or nope. anything? no don't need to do that at all oh it's great Good. all right and my final um finished object is a pair of socks so we do the birthday socks so this is a pair and it's Katie Lou's sock pattern by Your Dragon favorite. Pine Designs yes I do like it and I'm just going to have you hold those sure. up these are big these are big whose birthday is it so this is for <laughs> Scott so these are due on the beginning of February so they are done and ready to go so the nice thing is I can tuck them away now I just want to talk a little bit about yarns so big what size are they they're the size that fit his feet. <laughs> he has big feet. He does have big feet. <laughs> They're nice though. He'll like those. Yes, he will. So those are Bernat socks is the yarn. And we um, are very careful that when we're doing this and making socks, we want to make sure that they can wash them and they don't have, they throw them in the dryer. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to go out of frame for a minute. I'm going to grab five different skeins of yarn to talk about different yarns you can use that don't have wool in them that we have used right. that work really well. So here we go. So there's another example of the Bernat socks and it works really, really well. Nice and soft. And exactly. What you're saying is that these are washable. Yes, machine washable, machine dryable. So that's one. Another skein is, oh, now these you would need to buy two of these because um, each one does one sock. So that's that. This uh, ball of yarn is Perfect Pair by Loops and Thread. It's 454 yards. So that will do one full pair of socks. Same thing, machine washable, machine dryable. Perfect. It feels a little heavier than this. Yes, exactly. That would make so that's total sense. That. Yeah. Okay, now this is um, Barocco Comfort Sock. So it's nylon and acrylic. And let me just make sure. This is enough to do a skein, uh, to do a pair of socks. Um, I didn't buy it to make socks because I don't think I could do socks out of black. Very fine, yeah. Nice. It is very fine, but it's nice and comfy, but you can do that. You can get lighter colors and you can get 
colors that um, that are pattern colors nice. as well. So it's really nice to work with as well. The very first cowl I did for you were, were out of was that it? broken Feels nice. Yeah, right. Because they're nice. very fine. Like it's yes, a fine yarn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's that. Now this is a 50 gram skein, and so it's called Premier Yarns Wool Free Sock. No, it does one sock. It does one sock. Short so you'd need sock? two of those. Uh, Short? Oh. No, full length sock, but you would need two skeins to okay. do it. And that's the one that I have to try and match it a little bit because oh, okay. I don't like to have them not quite so matching. <laughs> Just a little issue in my life. And then this is a 100 grams, so this would do a full pair of socks. And this is called Bamboo Mosaic Sock Yarn. This is from Mary Maxim. And I'm not sure whether they still have it, but you can always just check. They have a catalog online, and you can see if they still you, do. I mean, if you do, if you are going to do socks, you have lots of choices out there. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Now, I didn't mention that the loops and threads you can actually get at Michael's. So get yourself a coupon, and you could probably this make... This one here? Yep. You can make a pair of socks for under $5, I wow, think. Wow, that's, yep. that's really good, because mm -hmm. I know you've uh, made socks that are a lot more than that. Yes. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I have. <laughs> I just know that for sure. <laughs> there you go. So those are my finished objects. And May, what about your finished objects? Well, oh, I'm exhausted with my finished objects. <laughs> but um, what I did do was I painted the bedroom. I painted the bathroom. I painted the kitchen, the living room, the hallways. Those are all my finished objects. I put up trim in the bedroom. I put up trim in the uh, pantry in the kitchen. I put up trim in the hallway. Mm -hmm. um, I painted the trim, so finished objects. Yes. I will go into more details in our, uh, maybe some tips of what helped me That's a paint great idea. Um, in our craft section mm -hmm. uh, because uh, there were some things that helped me out, and you, you were one of them, so you could be my prop. <laughs> You were kind of like my assistant. I, I was your assistant. Get, you got it. I need paper towel. I've dropped paint. Yep. <laughs> it's on the carpet. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe some tips because, you know, with COVID, I think we're going to be in the, for the winter. And a lot of people are in their homes. It was very busy. Benjamin Moore. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about that paint, too, in the, in the craft Thank section. You. But uh, they said they've been extremely busy. And I said it's because people are sitting around their house and you're looking at all the walls. You go, oh, I should do that. Mm -hmm. Used to be, Absolutely. I would say, um, oh, I'll move that wall. I'll knock that wall out. But since we have an open concept, I'm not being saying <laughs> Yeah, keep all the walls we've yeah, got. We keep the walls we have. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm looking forward to giving you some of the tips that I use that might help you in our crafting section. Okay, that right. sounds great. Yeah. All right, next we're going to talk about works in progress. My first work in progress is a pair of shorty socks, and I'm going to let you hold those up. Now, the reason why it looks like they're too loose, they're not, um, is the fact that it's a shorty sock. So this actually will be pulled up a little bit more and it's the bottoms up socks by Laura Nelkin. I love it I love the color I love this little thing going on here I know I love so, the little beads around the top beads around the top exactly so this is an interesting pattern is a paid for pattern it's actually part of the Lola um, Lola club so it was the first one I've ever done and I had to be brave so it involves brioche and increases and decreases and all kinds of things and putting beads on and wow. I thought, oh my goodness. So it was lots of fun and when I got done, I thought, I did it. I thought, so that's what I like about knitting is that you have to be at times brave to try something you're not sure you can do and then when you get done, you go, okay, I followed the instructions and I did. I did it. Now, um, you're Lauren, good at following instructions, though. I'm not so good at following well, instructions. Like, do you go on YouTube or do you go on like a written? I can't do written instructions. I think I just, you know how we sometimes say I'm stubborn. Yeah. Sometimes I would prefer determined. <laughs> that helps. So the very this first sock, it took me about four times to do the toe because that's where it's a toe up, and I thought, okay can do this like I had to actually talk myself through it you can do this Colleen just follow the instructions because as I said Laura Nelkin writes beautiful patterns it's very well written and well thought out and she's got tutorials so it's really really good um, and I just had to be brave enough to go for it 
that's what I did. You you are what's that word you use? Called? Determined. Determined. <laughs> you are determined. Like if yes. if you've got a plan, you're gonna you're gonna get it. You know. Oh. And if you fail and you fail and you fail, nope, it's not happening. Nope. You're gonna get. It. <laughs> <laughs> it. That's true. There you go. So. Now, the colored yarn is from Mitchell's Creations. And this um, plain color is, I think she called it Lola Nude, which I thought was a pretty funny name. But it's just a basic um, undyed yarn. Beautiful. I know. I'm really, really happy with it. Beautiful. So one more to go and we'll be in good shape. And now, did it take a while to do it? Or is it because you were learning it took longer? Or Yes. I think the second sock is going to go, go a little quicker. quicker. Exactly. Will you remember what you did? I will. <laughs> or do you have to go back? and? <laughs> you know what? I think after the first time through, I think I'll be okay. Good. All right. So my second work in progress is another hoe. So I'm going to let you hold that up. Beautiful. And, and it is the Leo and Roxy Anniversary Socks, and it's by uh, Pamela Graham for Leo and Roxy Yarn. Now, it is from, I did buy the kit. So this is Marled Sock Kit, and there's what it is. It's an 80-20 yarn, and it is beautiful. You can wash these, swim in the wash. And yes, and lay flat to dry. I don't usually dry socks on a in blogger. The dryer, right. Uh, definitely not in the dryer. I wouldn't put them in the dryer. I don't want to but, take yeah. any chances. So Great. this is actually, well, I haven't decided whether it's for May's birthday or for Christmas, but the reality is. Winter's coming. I winter's need, coming. I need she needs sock. them now. So <laughs> she's going to get them now. So anyway. Thank you. These are beautiful. Yeah. And it's it's a really, really nicely written pattern. So if you've never knit a pair of socks, this is a good one. Oh, good. Yep, it's a really, really good Not that I'll be doing it anytime no. soon, but you might because you're the knitters. Exactly. <laughs> well, there you go. Exactly. Nice. All right. So my third work in progress. You have been busy while I've been painting. Yes, I have. Is called the Mini Montrealer. And that is by Designs by Dells, who is Vincent Deland. The yarn is Barocco Vintage DK. And it is a little hoodie. Cute. With a front pocket, which I'm, that's where I am working on. And I'm really thrilled. So I oh, still have so to do the cute. hood and I have to do sleeves. So we have a new little person coming in the family. Not for a while. And so I'm busy working on that. Because this would be for an older... Right, and I think what I like to do when I'm giving gifts for babies is give something for now and then something for a little bit later. That's great. That's going to be beautiful with the hood and a little pouch here going yeah. on. Yeah, I'm so really, cute. really excited about it. Yeah, that's lovely. I, now, I wouldn't mind one of them for myself, actually. Well, there is actually the Montrealer. Yeah, the stripes are going the wrong way for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> because they say, you know, you to look... Why you look wide when you wear stripes that way, so I can't be doing that because I don't need any wider. <laughs> okay, so we don't listen okay. to her when she talks like well, that. Well, maybe so. we get the stripes going this way, it can lengthen me well, rather than widen me. Maybe a few slip stitches, we'll yeah. see what we can do. <laughs> or right. just plain, just a plain one. Would yeah, be nice, I could too. absolutely do a plain one. Perfect, that's lovely. Okay, so that's the third one now. I'm all about using up leftover yarn. So you saw the Snow Day Shawl by Mina Phillip in Finished Objects, and I had little bits left. And I thought, okay, I'm not gonna waste this yarn. I'm gonna do something with it. So once again, it's Vintage DK, Broco Vintage DK. And I found this pattern, it's called Leftover City, and that is by Casey Herlihy. And it is actually designed for fingering weight yarn. And I thought, well, I can figure this out. So if you asked me, it's been a while. So I don't remember how many stitches I put around. So it is a paid for pattern. I think it's a paid for pattern. I'll double check that. And so that's what I did. I, I just, I have a little bit left. I've got enough left to finish this up. So a little bit of ribbing. I did what was in the pattern. I just am using different colors and doing it a different way. This is for using like mini skeins and those kind of things, but I had a little bit left and so I decided to do that. I love this. I love the colors. I love it. I know. I was so happy how Did the it turn shawl... out better than you thought? Well, I was so happy with the colors in the shawl itself. I thought, oh, that would be nice to just have a cowl you could yes, throw on your head. Yes, for sure. That's going to be gorgeous. And I have a black winter coat, so just sticking yeah, it over. Yeah, that would be, be nice for the winter. Beautiful colors. I love it. Yeah, me too. Of course, it's your purple. It's all my purple. All right. Now, 
My last work in progress is called the Belmina, and that's by Melanie Rice. And it is a cowl. Now, you're going to see it and see that it is a very flat cowl right now because mm. it's not done. But what's going to happen is I'm going to sew one side to the other side and then it will be done. But I wanted to show you this because I'm going to have to block it before I sew it together. And this is a little bit of lace, but I'm not sure how much I'm going to worry about um, how I block it. I do want to block it. You're supposed to block it before you sew it together just because of the lace. Um, but that's one of those things that I'm just going to have to see. I'll see what happens when I wet the yarn and lay it flat and see whether I can get enough definition in the lace without having to pull it. Because they say you're not supposed to pull things too tight. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's issues that you need to get rid of. But well, this um, would be a nice, you know, when you put around a scarf. Well, you could if you <laughs> wanted to look like Cinderella or something. <laughs> When I was making this, May said, what did you say when I was showing you this? What did I say? Oh, you would like one. <laughs> Not with this, so I don't think. All right. I'm not thinking I like this. Okay. Like for you, I think that would be nice, but I'm not thinking I like that. All right. So I like the color, I think, is mostly what I like. Right. Just the plain blue would be nice. And I'm wondering if I could just make use this part and right. forget this. Like if I folded that part right. back and still had that little bit of a line detail. Yeah, that would be great. Yep. So yeah. I'm going to have to do some figuring. It's That's called in yes, your spare time. In my spare time. Very anyway, great. Good work. Yeah, I was really happy with that. Um, I had picked the color online. We've talked about that sometimes ordering yarn online is a little tricky, um, but I found that if I go to three or four different websites and choose the same color of yarn, then I get kind of a better sense than just using one, and it works really well. Good. So those are my works in progress, and next we're going to talk about our craft adventures. Welcome to our craft adventures. Um, it's going to be nice to get back into when we go on our adventures, when we actually go traveling. Exactly. As It'll much as we're enjoying the craft piece, um, we certainly miss going out on the road, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm still working on the van um, and trying to figure out what we're going to look like on in the inside, but that'll come next year. Exactly. Um, but do you have crafts? I that do you've been have crafts. Over and above all that knitting? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes your hands need to take a break from knitting. Um, and so what I have done, part of is my organizing, is to look at the supplies that I have. And I knew that at one point in time I ordered some beads. So I dug them out and found out that I had a whole lot of beautiful Mayuki Delica beads. Now they are cylindrical. Um, and what I found that I had was a bunch of size 11 Mayuki Delica beads. Too small to use with your knitting. So I thought, okay, I'm not sure why I bought them to start with. I know I was doing some... Uh, work with beads so I thought okay got to go back to that so thank so goodness uh, they are very tiny so thank goodness for you two so I decided because I decide that I'm going to make something for May and so the first thing that I decided to make um, for her was in uh, it's called an even peyote stitch bracelet so I'm learning so this is what it looks like I'm going to get May to take an up close um, picture um, I was using the colors that I had I think I would make something that had a little bit more contrast with it but I really liked these and these are colors that you like and what I decided to do was put on a magnetic clasp so that um, it would be easier for you to put on so let's just take a look and see oh, there nice. it is easy to put on nice yes and so it's nice and it will be nice for you to wear that looks like a lot of work. It My was. goodness, it's tiny, tedious. I know, but it's fun. I mean, learning yeah. something new is fun. And I like being able to do that. Exactly. And then on, it's easy for one yes. person. So if I'm home alone, I can put there all you the go. <laughs> home alone. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. Okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. So once I had played with that, I thought, well, what else could I do? So in the, you working on YouTube, I thought I'm going to find something else. So this is also even peyote stitch, but instead of having the stripes go this way vertically, these ones went horizontally. So what I did... Horizontal? Horizontal. <laughs> She's a good student. <laughs> right. 
You put it on the middle finger there. I did. So I'm going <laughs> to carefully hold my hand up. So there it is. Um, part of the reason why it could fit on this finger, but part of the reason for doing that is I put my yarn in between these two fingers. So I need to have it over here. Um, so of course it has black and purple, some of the colors hey, that I like. Nice. It does. So it's easy to put on, easy to take off. It's a little bit of metallic kind of stuff yeah, going on. Nice. So once again, I'll get made to take a picture of it and then we're good. So I did Very that. Nice. So okay, those are both no stretching it at all. Like it's there shouldn't be stretching it. No, it's nice. There you go. Nice. I can make one for you. Yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. All right, so that is even peyote stitch is what that is. Then I thought, because when you look on YouTube and look at my Yuki Delica beads, there's all kinds of things. So I thought, well, I'll make some stitch markers. So then I made something which uses something called brick stitch. Just look up on YouTube and I don't know how the best, I think I'll get made to take a picture of it. Okay. It's this little triangle and I made a little loop at the top. I'm just going to hook a safety pin thing kind it's of like through. It's like jewelry then. It, it, well, it could be earrings, absolutely, right. but I'm going to use it as a stitch marker. So I'm wow, just going to put a um, gourd uh, safety pin through right. and then I can use it on my knitting. Wow, I don't know how you do this without a magnifying glass. This is tiny. Oh, yeah. Thank must goodness have good for glasses. No, no, I think it's glasses. I think it's <laughs> it's good glasses. Right, and then also I was finding out some other things and there's something that's called square stitch. Same idea, still using Delicas. So I actually designed a pattern, right? It's kind of like um, designing uh, Fair Isle patterns. And so I put a little heart with some white and once again I'll get made to take a picture close up. It's I put a little loop on it so I could stick something through and use it as a progress keeper for my knitting. Um, but it was fun just to try. It's nice that you're not doing something you're really big. Just try something really little. So just a few different uses that I have for those little beads and I can play some more whether I make some bracelets or some rings or whatever. There you go. So Very nice. So uh, even stitch peyote, brick stitch, square stitch. Very good. You have been, I can't believe you squeeze this in even with all that knitting that you do. That's awesome. Well, it's nice to have something that gives you a break from knitting. Yeah, I suppose you, you need to do, do that because your hands get tired, your arms, shoulders. Yeah. That's good. Good. Yeah. Now, I've been working on um, still my miniatures. Yes. Now, with my miniatures, um, and being a knitter, you can appreciate this. You have some paid for patterns that right. you so can, I don't, you're, you're very respectful of that. Yep. Don't and I'm going to be respectful it. that we can't show the miniature type. Uh, things but I'm still working on it still excited about it um, and on some of the techniques I can use on my 1 to 12 like oh, okay when I used my um, the wall yeah I used that on my brick the wall of my uh, little fairy door here right I used the uh, technique of the egg cartons oh, okay and that was how I used that technique. So I can use it to show you the different techniques that I use mm -hmm. and if you go on YouTube and you want to know how to use that egg carton type thing um, it gives you all kinds of videos on that and how okay, to do that. Great. That's where I learned how to do it. So there you go. So I can show you some of the techniques. Right. Um, That's good. So yes. And also what I showed you this last year, because it is the, tis the season. Right. It's pumpkin season. <laughs> yes, and I showed you this, this wooden thing that I've had for 20 years. I didn't make up this pattern. Oh, okay. I got this 20 years ago. I can't remember where I got it, it from. Mm -hmm. Um, like I say, it might have even been 30 years ago. Oh my got goodness. This. And I've had this for 30 years, but, uh, last time I showed you last year, I just showed you this, but I didn't have the pumpkin. Now oh. I have the pumpkin. I can there show you. There you go. That. And so I just cut these pieces of wood out with the scroll saw. You just, and I did some this summer. I was tending to do more, but I didn't get around to it because other things come around. Right. And then there's so, a scroll saw that you need to replace. Yes. So. I had to replace the scroll saw, but that'll be uh, another story. <laughs> um, so basically you just use plywood. I just cut them out to pattern. You can paint them up any colors you want. Um, cut out this face. Um, I have some little hearts cut out and that is for the nose, I think, or whatever is around here. Mm -hmm. And a uh, little scarf. There you and go. there you go. And you know why I like this is because you don't have to carve out the pumpkin and have all that mess. You just, I just put nails at the bottom of these and you yeah. just stab it into the pumpkin like that and you're done. Exactly. And, and I, we, that would be brilliant because I remember the days of little boys and pumpkins and mom, mom, we want to get pumpkins, we want to get pumpkins. All right. Yeah. Two boys, two pumpkins. 
Perfect. So you cut into the top. Okay, get your hand in there and get that stuff out. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I didn't want to touch it. So then you have to deal with all that stuff too. So but you like pumpkin seeds too, right? Like, do you really like the pumpkin seeds? Not, no. not as much to, for all the work it takes to get No, them. not at all. And we don't make pumpkin pie. No. So we don't oh, like pumpkin, nope, pie. No pumpkin pie. So either. for us, this is a perfect solution. You know, <laughs> exactly. stab it in, put it on the front porch. We've got instant decoration. Exactly. And I'm going to make some more maybe to sell them next year. So that's, that sounds uh, like that's a great a idea. Good but I've been planning to do that for 30 years. <laughs> and that's how far I've gone. <laughs> but hopefully next year. Because you forget after the season's right. over. Exactly. It's just that. Um, now I talked about what I've been up to is painting. Right. So what I want to do is talk to you about some of the things that made my painting a little easier that might help you, if you're going to be painting, make it easier for you too. Um, we'll start off with what I did in the bedroom was dark brown. And you can see from the photo here. Mm -hmm. um, and also the, when they built this house, they didn't put trim around the closet doors, as you can see from the photo. There's no trim. Right. I'm not sure why I live with that forever. I know. For about 10 years we've lived with that. That's right. And uh, so anyway, I put trim around and also painted it exactly. uh, uh, blue color, which really lightened it up from the dark chocolate Absolutely. brown. As much as the chocolate brown was lovely. Yes, the light, we were ready for a change. The light blue has uh, changed it up, as you can see from the before and after picture here. Right. So that was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Then the bathroom also was chocolate brown, yes, as you can was. see from the photos here. Mm -hmm. um, very dark, but we had a light. Uh, I didn't put it up the the shower curtain. It was very. It was white. It was lit nice. Right. And again, it was a nice. It was nice, but it was tired. Right. <laughs> and uh, we have the before and after pictures of the bathroom. So as you can see, that takes time. Exactly. And then we have, again, uh, the pantry uh, needed a trim, Remember, and, and I didn't even really pay much attention to that over the years, but since we did the bedroom ones, I right. figured we'd do all of them. Now, how did you learn how to do that? Well, you know what really helped me was the fact that um, I did the dollhouse, and I was doing trim on the dollhouse, okay. and I had to make the miter cuts and everything else. Right. So that helped with that, but also I went on YouTube and realized what I was doing was butting up the trim. Uh, I was going to butt up the trim right to the corner of the wall. Right. But uh, after going on YouTube, I realized you've got to come in about an eighth of an inch. Okay. And make your markings from that. Oh, okay. So if you are going to put up trim or that kind of thing, right. again, YouTube's a great uh, resource okay. for that. Perfect. And I, I learned from that. It looks really good. It really looks good. Um, so anyway, and then, then we thought we would start, the because we live in a... A home that has open concept. The hallway is attached to the kitchen, the kitchen's attached to the dining room, the dining room's <laughs> attached to the living room, the living room's attached to the front hall. Absolutely. So it's a big uh, project. So what helped us is we chunked things out. We did things in sections. Yep. Like for example, the bedroom, we would do half, we did two coats. We moved everything out of the way. Right. And then when the half and two coats are done, we put everything back. Right. And we tied up that area as in a section, which Absolutely. I think helped us out a lot. Yeah. yeah, and the one thing that we both decided on, which was great, was that we were going to do a deep clean, which means everything was going to be scrubbed down and sorted out and get rid of stuff we don't need and go through that. And it's really helpful because it does feel like a brand new house upstairs. It does. Yeah. And the fact that the less you have, it's easier to keep clean and, and, right. and if everything has its yeah. place. Of course, that's not to say that the basement is a mess with all our stuff, <laughs> which it is, but we'll get there. Exactly. We'll get there. And we we will. chunk it out just the same way. That's right. Um, and also, you don't get to dust, um, you know, under the bed and all that. You know, you don't get that every day in every that's right. cleaning. So it was good to get a good clean. Absolutely. Now, some of the things that the project, I want to, uh, if you're going to paint, some of the things that really helped me out was a good ladder. Like just a little three step ladder that was easy to move, easy to maneuver, right, right. easy to go up and down. It had a little handle on it. That ladder was brilliant because okay, it wasn't perfect. heavy. It was really, really easy to move. Okay. Um, so that I suggest was a good thing. You need a nice, good brush for cutting in. Okay. Um, you need painter's tape. Now I didn't. I tried to painter's tape around the, um, what do you call that? The baseboards. Right. But I felt that um, it was more work than what it was worth because a lot of times you miss with the tape and that type right, of thing. Right, right, right. So I, I found the painter's tape was good for 
edges if you were too close to certain things. Right, okay, that makes sense. So just sense. handy. Yeah. Yep. So actually edging in was better just to use the brush. Okay. And of course the ceiling just used the, a right. good brush. A right, good edging absolutely. In brush. So that was another thing that was important was uh, the good brush. Also I bought um, this container at the dollar store. You can see it's been well used. It's been well used, <laughs> but it is it was amazing. It was so helpful because it has a little ledge to put the brush. I don't know how many times I wanted to go for a cup of tea or a little right. break. I just lay the brush there because before oh, cool. I didn't know where to put the brush. Okay, yeah. And it would lay across here. Right. Um, you could pour the paint back in, which you didn't use for the little spout. Right. It had a great handle for when I went up that ladder. Right. Just to hang on to. Oh, excellent. And so for the price of this thing, it was worth its weight in gold. So I recommend something like this from the dollar store or wherever yeah. you can get a paint store yeah. probably has something like yeah. this. But a great little project. Great little uh, thing to have. That's great. Um, another thing that I found was good was I bought some inserts for your paint tray. Okay. These are just paper, kind of plasticky. Plasticky things. Plasticky yeah. inserts. Yeah. You put them in, makes clean up a breeze. When you're done, you just throw it out. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, so the cleanup's fairly easy. That's now, fantastic. I did reuse them a couple of times because I was using the same color of paint. Right, right, So right. they are reusable. Very but good. But when you are done with them, just mm -hmm. throw them in the garbage. Brilliant. That is super helpful. Another amazing thing that I used was, um, what I use all the time actually in the garage, were these, uh, you use these for blocking too. I do, you? yep. Um, I think they're called play mats. You can get them, I think I got ours at um, the Superstore. Really? Yeah. So you have all black for when I you I have do, black and gray, yep. When you do your um, blocking. Yep. And I have a few in the garage for when I'm kneeling down or doing woodwork. Or right, whatever. right, right. But I brought them into the house and they were so good for when I was... Um, putting paint cans on. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. Actually, my hip when I was going around the baseboards, <laughs> um, it was helpful to lean on those. So my knees idea. when I was yeah. kneeling down helped my knees tremendously. Yeah. So I had a, a couple of those which were very helpful. So I'm hoping this inspires you to maybe <laughs> get excited about painting your house or redecorating or right. come up with some things. Um, but you did an amazing job. You're a yeah. good painter. Well, if you have helpful tips, if you yeah. have any helpful tips that would help other people, that we'd love to hear it. We can share it with everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but enjoy the, the winter if you're going to paint. Okay. And that's my crafts. Perfect. So, next we're going to talk about souvenirs. Before I actually show my souvenir, I want to explain where it comes from and how it happened. So, I had been missing taking knitting classes. I always love to learn, love to learn something new, take a knitting class. And so there was Vogue Knitting Virtual in, for October, and I decided I'd give it a try. So I signed up for the three classes. Um, so you got to pick three classes that you could take. And um, so what I picked was Patty Lyons, Easy Does It, Unraveling the Mystery of Ease and Sweater Construction. Great class. I have not started a sweater since I did that, so I can hardly wait to start one because there's some lovely tricks in that one. Um, the other one that I did was the Novus Construction by Laura Nelkin. So she does a side-to-side -side construction. So when you were talking about your horizontal stripes, the Novus Construction would let you have stripes that way. That way? That way. That way. That way. So you would have your vertical stripes and then you'd like them. Oh, okay. Yes. So you went this, but you're saying this. Okay, this is horizontal. This is vertical. Oh. So when I was trying to see. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <laughs> now I understand. Okay, math teacher, <laughs> there you go. All right, so that was my second one. And then my last one was a beading 101 with Laura Nelkin. And I had done some beading, as you've seen, um, but I just wanted to you know, learn a little bit more and take part. So I enjoyed that. Now, the nice thing about um, the classes is in some cases, they would give you a coupon code so you could get a certain discount, which is what happened with Laura Nelkin. So I then went on to her Etsy shop and she had, excuse me for a sec, she had a kit for the bead kerchief. So it's like a shawlette and it's got beads along the bottom. And so this is what you get. So you get yarn and you get beads. And May's in her head is going to be thinking, okay, beads, yarn, you've got it all. 
the thing with this pattern is you needed to have a fingering weight yarn that had at least 460 yards in it. That's a pretty big skein and I didn't have any. I also had a discount so I wanted to use it up. And the other thing is as far as beads go, I had to have 60 grams of a bead mix. And so before I ever wanted to try one of these, I wanted to see what that meant. So I'm going to kind of dive in and take a write down of what's matte, what's shiny, what's a B. There's all kinds of different things when it comes to beads, which I'm learning slowly, but I love learning it. So I can hardly wait to start working on this. Well, there you go. Now, do you have to have this before you take her tutorial or again? Um, she actually has on her Etsy shop, uh, Laura Nelkin does, she has a little kit that's called Learning to Knit with Beads. And so it's got a few things that you might need. It's got some beads, it's got some crochet hooks, It's there's a, a dental floss threader. There's a few things that she uses um, so that if you were going to take a class, you could use that. Okay. But because I purchased kits earlier, right. I didn't need to do that. Now, there's a lot of other souvenirs that come to the house that just are not pertaining to knitting and bees. There's books and there's other things. <laughs> You're like, going to be going, don't even mention my stuff. <laughs> so let's talk to you about books. <laughs> because this is actually funny. <laughs> and May's just, you know, she's calling me out, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there were two books by Kate Atherley and um, I had pre, pre in my head I had pre-ordered two books and then I got one of them but I didn't get any information about the second one and I thought did I only order one I was pretty sure I ordered two so I went on to look at my previous orders from Amazon and did I and I thought maybe I didn't order it. Like, I mean, I'm talking ordering it in March or April. And we're talking now that the books are arriving. And I thought, okay, Colleen, you've lost your marbles. You only ordered one book. That's fine. You've got lots of knitting books. It's going to be okay. And then, and then just this past week there, I get an email. So I thought I'd ordered both books from Amazon. <laughs> And I did not. I ordered one from Amazon and one from Chapters. So the second one is going to be arriving shortly because well, it comes go. out. They are both both Kate Atherley books and I'm very excited about them Good. both. I'm glad yes. you like them. I'm yes. glad you remembered. Yes. It's that vintage thing. Now that you're 60, it's going to go all down your Hello. Here. I still have a couple of weeks, week and a half, something like that. Um, something well, like that. Now that, and another thing came in the mail, your 60th birthday present. Yes. Um, and we're going to show you how it functions because I took a video of you unboxing it and uh, in, it, in action and everything yep. else. So that's kind of fun. Well, here we are unboxing your new toy. It appears that the uh, Canadian Border Services had to open it. Oh, <laughs> so maybe they thought it was uh, something else. I don't know what they thought it was, but you can tell by the yellow tape that it's been opened. So. Really? Well, maybe it's kind of a weird I would thing. imagine so. Makes it easier to open. All right, let's see what we have. Hope they kept the parts. <laughs> exactly. All right, so this is very exciting. So this is my early 60th birthday present. From May and so I'm absolutely excited and what it is is the standard motorized ball winder from Fiber Art Supply. Wow. Yes well, it's a That wow. piece of paper doesn't look like much. <laughs> I know well let's see. First of all we have the power. It's a motorized machine? Yes it's a motorized machine. How exciting. Now what comes next? Oh it has all these little boxes. And then, just packaging. This is packaging. And then, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Is it like a, a yes. yarn winder, or it is? Oh my goodness, it's heavy. Oh, it is an electric. So here is what it looks like. So exciting. Oh, wow. Yes. Look at that. We'll have to get that set up and see how that looks and works. Absolutely. Are you excited about that? I am Is excited it exactly about it. what you thought it would look like? Yes. 
Yeah, wow. really excited. I bet you at the border they had no idea. Like, what I is this know, contraption? That's right. They probably haven't seen anything like that. <laughs> now, you ordered this off of the website for Fiber Artist Supply. Okay, here we go. What do you think? Is it doing what it should do? It's doing amazingly well, yes. Does it have to be that far away? Uh, no. You could have that closer if you wanted to? Yeah. So you don't need a large space if you don't, if you're in this apartment or right. something like that? Right, right, absolutely. Look I could that. make it go faster. Should I make it go faster? Well, we could test. Okay, here we go. Wow. That's amazing. It is amazing. I'm so happy. What do you think? Oh, how excited. see your face. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. <laughs> wow. Oh, this is fantastic, May. This is going to make winding yarn for a sweater brilliant. Look at Very it go. Cool. I can make it go faster, but I don't know if I should. Well, what do you think will happen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do it a little faster. What do you think? Are you scared? Oh, I'm always scared. It's good. Where can it go? Wow. My arm isn't getting tired and my shoulder isn't hurting. If it happens, you get old, you got to get motorized things. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we know you have power tools up yes. in the garage. This is my power tool. Put an engine on it. That'll work. That's right. Neat. Wow. Well, I'm glad you like your new toy. And it doesn't take long. Like, you're almost done this skein of yarn. I know. And it's a big skein of yarn. It's about 438 yards. And it comes with this little box here. And, it, yep. and it's just a dial that... Yep, it's an on off and power. Slow it down. Yep, and absolutely. Now, what are the numbers on the little box there? What are, what's that? That just tells you how, many, how much voltage is going to it. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to turn it down because we're getting close okay. to the end. There we go. It's just slowing it down a bit. You can just hear the engine slowing down. Hear that engine slow down? There it goes. Wow, look at this. And we wow. are done. What do you think of that? Oh my gosh, look at this brilliantness. And it cakes it up. Yeah, I don't know if I can, am I allowed to stop it? I don't know. We'll soon find out. Well, it's not like a fan where you're going to cut your hand off. No, I guess you I should turn it off. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 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 we're turning off when it don't. Exactly. Just like the computer. What it oh my well, gosh, look at, look at that. that. That is well, beautiful. Well, I'm glad you are happy. Look at how beautiful that is. It is nice. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you like your new toy. I and, do. Uh, I'm so happy. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yes. So tell us about that machine. Like, I, I, I saw it run. I thought it was really cool. But right. But you can tell as a knitter what, what, what so, it is. So it is an electric wool winder. And it is amazing. <laughs> so... I have had a wool winder, a hand crank one, um, for 30-ish years. And it works very well, just so you know. It does like work It okay. did really work well. Exactly. You didn't really have any problems with it. No. Um, but when you start to wind wool enough for a sweater, it can be a little bit much. And I thought, it looks really cool, and I'd really like to have one. And so May so kindly said, you're turning 60. I'm not 60 yet. You're turning 60. <laughs> And why don't we get that for your 60th birthday? And I said, that would be the perfect thing because it is amazing. Mm. So um, I will put in the description below what it is. It's from the Fiber Artist Supply Company. It is does come from the States. I did have to pay some duty, duty on it. Um, they're using um, FedEx, I think, now. And it might come a little easier for you. Um, but it is worth it, and their customer service is amazing. So I will put their website in the description box below so you can right. see that.
Okay, so that would be our souvenirs then, I guess. There we go. So those are our souvenirs. Thank you so much for watching. We're really glad that you spent some time with us. It's glad to be back here and talking to you. We've missed you. But like I say, it's been because of the house has been so upset with the painting that we really <laughs> exactly. didn't get an opportunity, but we're glad to be back. Absolutely. So comment down below. Let us know how you're getting along in this year of COVID. Oh my goodness. Um, thank goodness we've done the painting and now we can come down to the basement and do a little bit more tidying and sort. So let us know if you've got any ideas, anything you'd like to see on the podcast, because we really like doing this for you. And we'll get through this winter together. Absolutely. Until next time. You take care.